ஹலோ ஃப்ரெண்ட்ஸ் வெல்கம் டு ஜாவா இஇ சவுலேட் லேர்னிங் சீரீஸ் ஸோ இன் திஸ் வீடியோஸ் ஆஃப் பார்ட் வி ஆர் கோயிங் டு சி ஹவு டு யூஸ் ரெக்வஸ்ட் டிஸ்பேச்சர் ஸோ தி ரெக்வஸ்ட் டிஸ்பேச்சர் ஆப்ஜெக்ட் இஸ் யூஸ்ஃபுல் டு டெலிகேட் தி கால் டு அ டிஃப்ரெண்ட் ரிசோர்ஸ் வித் இன் ஏ வெப் அப்ளிகேஷன் ஆர் யூசிங் தி ரெக்வஸ்ட் டிஸ்பேச்சர் யூ கேன் include the output of other resources as part of the present response to the client browser so we will first learn the concepts behind uh, request dispatcher and how we forward uh, request to a different resource or include the output of other resource to the present system so now in this video you are watching the part 1 of the concept in the next video we will watch part 2 of the concepts uh, after that we will create an example so we can get request dispatcher object by making call to so the servlet do get or do post will receive a request object right so http request from there you can make a call to so the call to request dot get request dispatcher will supply you the required dispatcher object so once you up obtain the request dispatcher you can make a call to forward or include so for the forward you can pass the request and response from the servlet processing method itself so it doesn't matter whether you use service or do get or do post so all this method will have request as well as response so from this request and response you can pass the same object to the forward method same goes for include now let us look at the forward method so let us say there is a browsing user who sends a request to a servlet so now servlet1 received the request so inside this servlet do get or do post or service method you will have access to both request as well as response object using the request object you will read the parameters sent by the user browsing user browsing user using the response you will respond back to the uh, browsing user so the browsing user sent request to servlet1 now servlet1 can process the request sometimes it may not be possible for servlet1 to process the entire request so what happens it partially process the request and if required it will fill some information for the next processing unit that means we are going to forward right so here let's say this is the requested or the form field that or whatever information user is sending and the request is let us say the these are all the request information the request is partially processed here there are some part of the request which is not yet processed but based on the partially processed request in the request itself servlet1 can set some attributes using the set attribute so this is the request objects uh, inside the request object we can set the attribute so the method is same as we saw previously so this is a string then this is the part we will store as part of the request you can store any object uh, 
uh, in the second parameter likewise you can store you can set multiple attributes so once this partial operation is done it transfers the call to one more servlet so it make use of the request uh, dispatcher object and calls forward and it will pass the request and response received that means here uh, let's assume you are uh, overriding the do post do post will have request and response so we will forward this request and response uh, uh, to this uh, forward method so before that we need to get a request dispatcher right so for the get request dispatcher you will actually pass the url resource that means here you will pass the url for the servlet one here you will pass the servlet two and you will get the request dispatcher so once you get a request dispatcher you will make a call to forward method so this transfers the delegation to servlet two now ownership is transferred to the new servlet so it is the owner's responsibility to process the request and respond back to the client so when the request was initially received the owner is servlet one so servlet one processed some request then to process the remaining portion of the request it forwarded the call to servlet two so now ownership is transferred to servlet two now servlet two is responsible to process any remaining request and send the response so it can send the response or it can even forward it to some other uh, processing resource so the processing resource can be anything it can be a servlet or jsp all right now as part of uh, the request processing so initially it received control right it may some set some attribute as part of the request object itself so the same information can be read by the um, forwarded servlet so servlet one may set some attributes and servlet two will use get attribute and it can make use of string and get those attribute so it's the understanding between these um, get and set attribute on your particular request processing system so now after processing or after the completion of the request so here request is processed and it output may be kept by in the set attribute by the servlet one then servlet two will process the remaining request and it may either uh, set new attribute if it is going to forward to some other servlet otherwise it can use the uh, obtained information and process the information to send the response back to the browsing user so in the browsing user perspective the form is submitted to servlet one or the request is sent to servlet one and browsing user never know that there is one more servlet involved in the request processing so all they know is they, pro they send the request to some servlet and they got the response and they may not know which servlet is serving them so we know how to get the request uh, dispatcher from the request dispatcher you can actually make a call to include method now let us see how include behaves so the browsing user will send request to servlet one and servlet one will process this request and when it is forming the response 
when it is forming the response it can include other web resources as part of the response so the html html we know it is static and the response from servlet 2 so using a print writer object you can create a dynamic content so this can be included to the output so we will include other web resources and here also we will pass request and response so for static content uh, it is uh, not uh, useful but if it is a jsp jsp can you make use of the request object to read some information and format the output so the same include happens for servlet also so the same way we can pass request and response the servlet can do additional response here uh, some kind of formatting all those stuff that can be included so that will be the dynamic content and you can include some html that will be uh, static content so all this will get appended to the response which is initially formed by the servlet one so now if you see here in this picture so let's say the servlet one already kept some response then we include some other response from the html that will be the static content then we will include the response generated by servlet two that will also participate as part of this uh, uh, response finally the servlet one will send the final response which is the combination of uh, response generated by servlet one and the static content of html and uh, the output generated by servlet two so we can call this as a final response and the final response goes to the browsing user so this is the response final this will be the request so to summarize again browsing user may send request to servlet one in the previous video we saw i mean the previous slide we saw how a servlet can process the uh, i mean the transfer the request to some other uh, uh, web resource it can be html servlet or jsp here if you see here we are not transferring the ownership so ownership still stays with servlet one but uh, since it, this is the owner as part of the response system it includes other resources then it sends the output to the browsing user so that's the use of uh, uh, include method so now you know what is the use of uh, forward and include in the part two we will see uh, the example which we are going to create that's all here let us continue with part two and we will learn uh, um, about the example and in the final part of the video that means in the part three we will create the example using wildfly and eclipse ide thank you for watching bye